Welcome to our webinar on why you should be investing in senior living now. I'm excited to have today with us our esteemed guest speakers who are self-made entrepreneurs who started with nothing and built multi-million dollar businesses. Mini Chopra is the CEO of Monil Investment Group and Shahid Imran is the CEO, CEO of Bill Senior Living. Mini Chopra, also nicknamed Smile Chopra because he always smiles and you can see him, <laughs> is a sought after multifamily syndication expert and mentor. Shahid Imran is the CEO of Build Senior Living that has built more than 17 successful communities worth over 200 million. In 2019 December, Build Senior partnered with Monil Senior to form Senior Living Dream Team, providing investors with a great opportunity to invest in this strong asset class while creating affordable luxury senior living communities for our aging population. I wanted to bring senior living to uh, investing in senior living to light for a few reasons, one of which, as a country, we have the largest senior demographic in the world behind Italy and Japan. Almost 10,000 people are turning 65 every single day. And let that sink in every single day. I think that in itself is an opportunity of enormous proportions that should really make us examine this asset class in detail from an investment standpoint. In today's webinar, we will cover demographic shifts and what this means to the asset class, why this asset class is provided safe and high returns compared to other asset classes, the different types of senior living, and the impacts of COVID-19 on senior living, as well as how this team is revolutionizing the assisted living world. I'm Kavita Bartake, all of you, most of you know me. I'm a principal of Cherry Street Investments and a realtor and a broker, life insurance. A quick disclaimer before we get started. Uh, we are not pitching any deal here. This is not a solicitation of any kind of deal. Uh, this is purely for educational purposes only. Even when or if you're interested in a deal after this presentation, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, always we recommend that you consult your attorney, financial advisor, and CPA for all legal investment and tax matters. A few housekeeping rules. Uh, any issues with audio visual? I've had a lot of internet issues, so please let me know ASAP so I can fix it. Uh, please locate the Q&A box in the Zoom application for asking questions. Uh, it really becomes very difficult to track questions in the chat box. So please use that Q&A box and find it in your Zoom application right now. This webinar will be recorded and I send out the link to all registered attendees within 24 hours. If you would like to not have it go to spam and promotions, please add my email to your contact list so it can, it can go to your inbox. A few quick notes about some upcoming webinars that I'm hosting. Uh, in July, we have an estate planning webinar, uh, which will cover will, tr trusts, and more with Anderson Legal at, on July 8th at 7.30 Central. We also have a really good CPA. She's very smart about taxes and we, we're going to learn from her ab about how we can get smarter about saving our taxes. Finally, in July, on July 22nd, we are featuring three very young, under 25, super successful real estate investors, uh, David Tupin, Dylan Marma, and Chris Salerno. Uh, they have done millions of dollars of real estate investment, are, are really, really young, under 25. Uh, and so we want to hear from them. We want to understand what they're doing right and what are the, some of the challenges that we've gone through. So our kids, so maybe we can inspire the younger generation. With inspiring a younger generation, I've done a series of financial education course uh, for kids um, between five and 18, along with my partner, Anar. Uh, she handled all the kids' education. So all of these recordings are on YouTube if you'd like to check us out. We also, I also started this Money Wise Stock League on Wall Street Survivor. It's a three-month challenge for kids to learn about stock market trading. And um, it's basically playing in the li live market uh, with virtual money, paper money. So you're welcome to join us and have your kids join us rather. If you'd 
like to subscribe and keep up to date with all these recordings you can look at look at my youtube channel and please subscribe to it you will be updated automatically when we upload uh, new webinars and video content i'm kavita bartake a lot of you folks know me so i'm not going to spend much time i'm an investor i focus primarily on multifamily, but i'm also looking at other asset classes uh, I'm also very focused on infinity banking policies right now. So a lot of my investors are interested in setting these up to help fund their real estate investments. So I'm working on those. I have a master's in computer science and I spent about 20 years in technology before I got into real estate. I have a, a Facebook group called Purely Passive uh, and you're welcome to join it and also join our weekly webinars, uh, bi-weekly webinars. Uh, by going on my website, cherrystreetinvestments.com. Today, our guest speaker, I'm super excited to introduce Vinny today. Uh, Vinny is, like I mentioned, a very self-made entrepreneur. He actually came to the US more than 40 years ago with just $7 in his pocket. And he's now the CEO of Monil Investment Group, which has executed over 28 successful syndications worth $360 million equating about 4,300 doors of multifamily. Vinny is also an international best-selling author of his book, Apartment Syndication Made Easy, a step-by-step -step guide, and host of two podcasts, Syndication Made Easy and Mr. Smiles Motivation Talk Show. Besides real estate investment, he has achieved a lot of success in marketing as well as motivational speaking, and you will see that very shortly when Vinny starts talking. <laughs> he has expanded the Monil Investment Group beyond multifamily with Monil Senior Living, Monil Hospitality, and much more. Our next guest speaker is Shahid Imran, and I realized just a little bit of talking to him, he maintains a very low profile, uh, but he is super successful and he's a self-made entrepreneur starting also from scratch, and he's now the CEO of Bill Senior Living. He has grown two businesses from ground up to millions of dollars in annual sales. One of his first businesses was American Medical Equipment that provided latest durable and technologically advanced medical equipment to senior living facilities. While he was doing this, he actually had to visit senior living facilities and he had this vision of providing better affordable senior living communities than the ones he visited. So in 2012, he sold his multi-million dollar medical equipment business and began his journey in forming Bill Senior Living that has, as I mentioned earlier, built over successful, uh, 17 successful communities worth over $200 million. With that, I want to hand it over to our guest speakers today, uh, Vinny and Shahid. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kavita. Thank you. We really appreciate Thank you, Kavita. Ha having us here. I'm going to share the screen, the PowerPoint presentation that yes. we have put together, and hopefully we can get the ball rolling. We didn't know you were going to give such great introductions. Sorry, we have a little bit about ourselves. You know, we like to talk about ourselves, right, sometime. So a few things are there. I just want to thank you, Hartley, and everybody joining. We have 48 of us on the call right now, and hopefully more will be joining. And uh, thank you for your time, everybody's time taking this evening. Uh, Monil Investment Group is on the left side and Shahid's company built Senior Living. And then I opened Monil Senior Living. Monil is our kid's name, Monica and Neil. We kind of put it together as the legacy when we pass into heavenly far, you know, we'll be leaving something behind. Today is, should we be investing in senior living? So we'd like to give, you know, some ideas why we are so excited about senior living and what's happening around the world and in USA. So I hope, and these are some of the companies that we, I have started, uh, hospitality, senior living, academy, digital branding, all that stuff. But then again, you know, disclaimer, I know Kavita already said that, you know, please share it to your, you know, to your legal. We are not selling any securities or anything like that. We just have to cover that to cover our basis from our attorneys. Then the next one, I don't want to go over. I think Kavita already went over everything, 
probably I don't need, oh, I sold educational books, Bible books, door to door that converted me from an engineer, mechanical engineer. I worked for Larson Tubro in Bombay when I came here for my MBA in, at George Washington University. It turned me from an engineer to a salesperson and then a marketing, then motivation. And I just thoroughly enjoy, I had no regrets. You know, and it's been just a wonderful uh, sailing. We just have been married for 40 years. There we go, right there. That's a good one. We just celebrated our 40th wedding anniversary. We moved to the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. We live in Blackhawk and, uh, you know, two children, Neil and Monica. That's why we bu built the company there. I'm a California broker also. I think you already covered everything. You have done all these syndications, Hilton Garden Inn. And we just go further. We've been managing, by the way, all of our assets. That's the other thing. We have vertically integrated. So I have done, and we, at the peak, I had 135 team members full time, full time. And then again, you know, Shahidji right there, a successful entrepreneur, came to USA with both of us, came with humble beginnings, you know. I mean, we lived in one bedroom apartment. I lived in six siblings in one bedroom apartment. And it's good to have that kind of, you know, thing. And then 23, I do want to say 17 have been completed. Six more have been already started. So 2023 total, thank you. Almost for, uh, right over 400 million. And I do want to take back and I want to give credit to Shahid's motto. I want to spoil the generation that spoiled us. And that has been the real motto of our whole unifying companies and, you know, just making a big difference. And I really want to thank John Rusin joining us. He's the CEO of uh, Rusin Capital, also bachelor's in biology. Actually, he then, uh, John went to school together, you know, and they've known each other for nine years. And when I was looking into senior living, I said, oh my gosh, where should I go? Where should I start for two years? And John said, you got to talk to Shahid. <laughs> you know, so it's been such a pleasure that uh, we have worked together. Now we are general partner, you know, in the Shahid, uh, senior living, uh, our fund and everything that we're building. A little bit about me. I don't know if anybody cares, but I've been on some talk shows and podcasts, lots and lots of them. If anybody will Google me, you'll find. And also... I have the two books, a uh, little bit I can talk about that if anybody, and that's my first book. Second book is coming out. Then the two podcasts you already said. And then of course we have a third podcast. If anybody interested, even following us a little bit more every Thursday night, five o'clock our time here in California, we do a show also live show on innovative senior living investment show. And then I have Friday morning, my another show. So four shows a week, <laughs> that's kind of good. This is our total portfolio kind of joining it together, 880 million, I don't want to blabber it. These are just to kind of give an idea, you know, why we are talking, you know, what gives us the, uh, you know, credibility, I guess is the word, you know, why should we, we be talking to you about certain of these things? And that's what we wanted to share. Uh, my company, Monil Investment Group, we did, by $52 million deal. That was my 27th deal in Florida with my partners, Enzo Multifamily. And then we bought another one, 35 million in uh, also Florida. And then other partial portfolios, all my rest of them are all there. I've already closed on 22 of them full cycle. Also, Shahidji, you know, again, would you like to talk about, I mean, Shahid lives in Michigan. And he's done very, very well. As you can see, uh, this is our latest one that uh, we built it in Cape Corral, Florida. It's not even open. We couldn't open yet, right? It's opening yeah, hopefully, up. Hopefully, uh, first of July. Uh, first we of July. Are expecting state survey uh, uh, next week. So next week we'll get the full, you know, occupancy. 88 units. We built it for this price, including land development cost permits, everything and everything. And we have an offer right now without even opening the, the, the you know, facility, uh, 19 million for 
right now we have it. We are very tickled, you know, because uh, the product that Shahid has been building has been well liked by the REITs and other family offices and things like that. And these are already sold, as you can see how much it was built for in Michigan, of course, because Shahid lived there, lives over there in Michigan. He's saturated the market. <laughs> 23, 22 of them are in Michigan, you know? So that's where that is. And then there are more and more and more. Hampton Manor is our brand name. So if you can just Google Hampton Manor in the city in Michigan, you will come to know. So many of them are already completed construction. There are some under construction and we are gonna be building all around you know, the nation. That's where our focus is. So let's just get into you know, what we are talking about. Kavita talked about silver tsunami. Silver tsunami is where we are finding 10,000 baby boomers are turning 65 every midnight. As they wake up, they are 65 years of age, 10,000 of them every single day. And that caught our attention. Actually, it caught Shahid's intent in, you know, uh, you know uh, ideas many, many years back, but two, three years back, it caught my attention. So we started looking into, we want to share with you right from 1900, that's right over here, uh, 1900. This is 150 years of the chart in USA, in USA, and we are right at 2020, right over here. And you could see the population 64 to 74 is in the green, the darker green. And then the lighter green is 75 to 84. And you can see how it's growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. Huge, huge growth. And then of course, 85 plus you know, age group is the blue one that's on the top. We are sitting right over here in the 2020, right over here. So you could see how tremendous growth is going to happen in 30 years. In 30 years, the whole spectrum is going to change in USA and across the world. And that's what we are talking about, why there is a strong opportunity that we should be looking into something like this. And then again, the number of people, we just in a different graph, we wanted to give an idea of just the 2010, where we are, we are right over here, 2020, and we have 56.4, uh, 65 plus right there. And now in 10 years alone, it will be 74 million, then 82 million in another 10 years, then 88 million, and then 100 million. Actually, I have my little something over here. I can't see this. Okay. There we go. I'm going to reduce it down. Sorry about that. Okay, we are. Now I can see the whole graph. So 98.2% you know, a million people in next, you know, like uh, 40, uh, 40 years. That's right, you know. And then 85 population is also growing, as you can see right there, 6.7 million to 9.1, 14 and all the way. So there is a big pent up, you know, growth, demographic, demographical shift happening in USA. So that's another way to look at it. Another way to see supply and demand outlook, how it's going to change in the next nine years. Just in nine years, 31% more growth is in this right there. And then 33% growth in the 85%. Another way to kind of look at it top investment choice. The other thing we wanted to share with you all is that apartments, I've been chasing apartments and I still buy apartments, by the way. If you just put an offer for $34 million deal in Austin last week. But the thing is, apartments are doing great. We have bought so many of them, but stabilized senior housing has outperformed even double double than the apartments. And, you know, that has been a secret. Look at that right here from 2011, all the way to over here. This is 2018. Of course, if we extend it, it's going to be bigger and bigger gaps. So that's something to really talk about. Maybe there is something to look into senior living investing. That's the other graph, which we are really, John, would you like to share about that? Yeah, I'll let you kind of, of take so so what's really a good and a bad thing. So as we look, you know, the next 20, 30 years, 
um, there's a ton of opportunity coming. And so if you look on this graph, so starting, you know, right now, the, the equilibrium is starting to shift. So right now we are about even, but the next 20, 30 years, the demand in this is blowing out of the water. So it's very, very exciting to see. And with the construction, we have another graph to show that the path or the demand or how quickly people are building is not as quick to keep up with the demand. So the inventory is at a 30 year low. So yeah. it's a great, you know, path of opportunity for us, people like us. So totally. Thank you. Thank you, John. And again, this one is amazing. You want it also? Yeah. Sure. You yeah. know, in this one, as you can see, the senior housing market trends in the crash of 2007 and eight. Wow. Even apartments went down. As you can see, minus 15, 18%, even office buildings even go way down here and other, you know, shopping centers will be way, way down. But senior housing market did not even see any downfall at all, as you can see. So that's why we are seeing over here also in 2020 or so, and 21 with the epidemic, we'll talk about it, you know, with the coronavirus and all, how it might be affecting it. But the demand is so strong that we foresee, you know, the returns will be very, very strong in the coming years for the next 30 or 40 years. And how we choose senior living location, I would love to ask Shahidji, would you like to kind of talk about, you know, what are the feasibility and how we choose locations and things like that? Hmm? Yeah, sure. So, so basically, you know, we bring uh, Hampton Mayor, uh, you know, facility, facility is the indirectly a product of our, you know, hiring the personnel that have, you know, nurturing the caring characteristics. So we have our own, uh, you know, we have to go through due diligence. Uh, they are, you know, ma we, we make sure that uh, there are uh, enough demand and density uh, can uh, uh, support. Mm -hmm. whatever uh, demand and supply we are following uh, on the you know market so so there are a few things we have to go through market analysis feasibility and uh, uh, you know working with the local uh, city and and township uh, officials and see what the demand is and the uh, supply beautiful beautiful thank you thank you so much also we wanted to mention maybe john you would like to cover this one right yeah. Sure. yeah. So if you look, so everyone typically thinks of senior housing as one, you know, in a box, but really when you break it down, there's on a high level overview, there's five main types. So age restricted apartments, independent living, assisted living, memory care, and skilled nursing. So as you go from the left to the right, it becomes more need driven versus your choice. So, you know, you choose, people choose, will choose to live in an age res restricted apartment, but as you get into the assisted living, memory care, skilled nursing, it's more of a need and people are being forced to go there. So um, we are in assisted living and memory care, which is awesome. So there is some state licensing. The average stay is phenomenal. So we have another slide showing the comparing it to multifamily, but you know, very good. And so um, if we look, yeah, no, that's good. So, yeah. If, if you can go back, John, I would like to say one thing. Oh, um, sure, uh, sure, sure. So if you can see, uh, assisted living and memory care are fitted by independent and skilled nursing. Yes. So from hospital, you go to a uh, nursing home. Then from nursing home, you get uh, referred to assisted living or memory care, depending on your care level. And it becomes necessity where you cannot be discharged to go home. So it becomes a necessity for you to end up uh, choosing a premier assisted living. And same thing with age restricted apartment and independent. It's, mm -hmm. It becomes a stage where you cannot take care yourself at the end, you will end up in a assisted living. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, you know, that's the preliminary that when I was looking at senior, you know, like the rehab centers and nursing homes, it was really frowning me to be truthful. Uh, many years back, I thought about it. My friends were doing it. I said, oh, they said, we need the hardest business. And when, you know, Shahid and us, we got together that we are on the very first stage of assistance. And that's what really liked, you know, and with the very less exposure to risks and running an operation and things like that. So that was a big, big 
we can answer some more questions as we go on also. And then, so this is the whole spectrum of the nursing care, the com uh, continuing care retirements, then majority independent living is this one. We are only in this space right there, which is pretty big space. If we look at it, this next chart, we are focused only on assisted living and also the memory care. And that's what Shahid has built in our communities. We'll share with you some pictures of the, both of them together in the same facility. That really makes it very, very good for us. And then of course, this is a huge one. I hope everybody looks at this one because as the population is increasing, the dollars spent on that age group is humongous, humongous. These are trillions, by the way. This is four, uh, you know, these are in billions, right? So it's 4.2 trillion, 4.5 trillion, and we are right about here, 2020, it's gonna increase to six trillion, six trillion, almost 50% increase in the total expenditure with the national health expenditures, including all different you know, uh, services and products and things like that. So that really tells a lot also what is fixing to happen in this industry. I mean, this is just seven years. In seven years, they're expecting it to go to six trillion, right, from four to six in just seven years. So you could imagine how it's gonna be after that. Again, this is a good one. We wanted to put this slide to kind of share to our you know, investors who are on the call today, you know, who pays for it? I know. So maybe this is something, Shahiji, would you like to kind of share? Yeah, so, so best thing I like about senior living is uh, it's a private pay. It's, we do not, uh, uh, it's uh, not insurance or uh, you know, state funded uh, program. Mm -hmm. Usually uh, it just charts as uh, self says 63 and four, 14. So, I usually see it anywhere from 90 to 92 percent is uh, private. So that's, uh, you know, best thing. So they are not uh, any, we have to follow uh, big guidelines for federal government or uh, state uh, or local uh, Medicaid. And uh, it's very compliance. Uh, we target for uh, middle class families. So their health care uh, and, you know, if there's anything needed when they moved into assisted living, ALF or memory care, they have usually uh, uh, Medicare or, uh, you know, debt cover. So it's just uh, what, you know. It's... Beautiful, beautiful, sure. And then this is another one. John, you want to take over? Yeah. Awesome. So... The memory care, sorry, if you go back. Uh-huh, sure. Cost for the memory care or where is the memory care fit in here? Okay, that will be higher. I think this is probably memory care would be down here, isn't it? Assisted living. And if there is level of services from what I understand, right, Shahid? Yes. So it will be, yeah. Hmm? It'll be closer. It'll be in between the assisted living yes. costs and the nursing. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so could... usually memory care is, uh, I would say, anywhere uh, 15 to 20% uh, more. Yeah. More yeah. than yeah. assisted living. Assisted. Assisted, assisted, yes. Surely. Definitely. Definitely. Then this is a good one. Uh, John, you want to cover? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, so one of the reasons we're really excited about assisted living is when we were looking and comparing it to other asset classes. So in this chart, we compare it to newly built or we compare newly built assisted living to already built multifamily. So, um, you know, the class when you're building an A plus building and compare it to a C plus. So the income potential is much higher. So in our facilities, our residents are paying anywhere from, you know, 3,800 all the way up to five, 6,000, depending on the level of need and the level of care. So the income potential is much higher. Concessions and delinquencies are very, very low, if any. Um, and one thing that got us really, really excited as well is the demographic of our residents. So it's a non-working resident. So for example, a recession, if our residents aren't working, so they can't lose a job. And in our facilities, majority of our residents are private pay. So the, the rent's already been accounted for. So it's very good to know. Uh, maintenance on a new building, very low. Uh, deferred maintenance, again, very low, if any, or little. Um, and then the turnover is low. And if you look at the average stay for our residents, anywhere from you know two years to two and a half years, whereas the multifamily, most leases are six to 13 months. Um, and then with our projects, oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> no. With our projects, it's a much shorter hold time. So two to three years versus a traditional multifamily is five to seven. So 
And yeah, the so you're typically in these uh, projects, uh, John, oh, you're typically sorry just about that. <laughs> building them and then usually selling them to a REIT. Do you stabilize before you build them? Like, do you actually get yes. the occupancy up? We yeah. do. Uh, uh, yeah. It's yeah. different from REIT to REIT, Kavita. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, prefer they want to buy on CEO and some would like to see 50, 60% uh, stabilization. Mm -hmm. If I am going to be the operator, I usually wait till it's uh, 60 to 70% uh, stabilized. Mm -hmm. And usually we achieve our 60 to 70% within first uh, 90 to 120 days. Sure. So let's say the build time is like 18 months to two years, 24 Yeah, months. I would say 14 to 16 months. 14. Now, yes, yeah. It, this, it was in, uh, you know, before COVID. Now, since construction is, is slower, uh, slow down, so now we should see it from 12 to 14 months. Mm -hmm. Sure. Kavita, also I wanted to mention that when we are about 70% occupied, and I'm sure other people do that, we start advertising and marketing. So we are almost like 40% pre-leased before even we open the door. You know, so that is a good way that we don't start marketing when we open the door. We start advertising and getting people in to see, you know, the plans and all that beforehand. And sure. then you also know how the particular market or sub-market is, the location is. Totally. Of, course, of course. You do all your analysis before. Yes, so you for know sure. that That's uh, step one, uh, Kavita, we do. So. Yeah, I wanted to show, I know there is a uh, PowerPoint. I mean, we wanted to share with you a little video and we'll talk about, uh, Shahidji, would you like to say about COVID? I thought it will be very appropriate if we are able to show, uh, you know, this <coughs> video uh, from uh, right there in one of the communities of ours and how they are celebrating a birthday. You know, their uh, mom, I think, is inside and their families outside and they are just, you know, through because we locked down right away in every uh, you know, center. Would you like to share with us? Yeah. So, Vinny, I think you have to reshare. We don't see it. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I apologize. Okay. Well, sorry about that. There we go. That's this one. Okay. I'll just play it again. It's kind of like the video, a very short video to kind of share with you. Please go ahead, Shahidji. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. You Can see you it? The audio. I think, yeah, audio somehow, I was trying that before, but it's just a family outside. We have zero case of COVID. Some of the investors might like to ask us, you know, how did we achieve that in 14 centers that Shahid manages right now? And we had zero case. And that was because we locked down, even no family members are allowed to come in, you know, even for birthdays or anything like that. But we are able to do that, you know, through the windows and so forth. So maybe you would like to say something about that? Of Thank course, you. you know, there's no doubt that uh, not being able to see your loved one uh, creates, you know, stress. Uh, and uh, this is never a good thing. On the business side, <coughs> excuse me, it is uh, definitely uh, crafting a new normal for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it, it is creating and uh, implementing new day-to-day -day, uh, operational and care policies as well as care uh, giving guidelines but you know i'm uh, you know confident that this is new normal and you know going forward will uh, enable us to um, operate as usual with few uh, strategic and private and changes to our uh, standards and uh, process so and it's essential for us to safeguard you know we have in place we have had place temporary halt and uh, uh, new residents so we we stopped taking for i would say uh, from end of March through, um, we actually just start taking, uh, I believe, uh, second week in June. So, and so you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is necessary. Um, and I'm confident that with right strategy and a strong execution, we will come out uh, of this safer and more united as an uh, industry. Sure. Kavita, you had a question. Yeah, have you guys, are you guys putting some testing policies in place before you yes. get to Yes, yes, yes. So we are following CDC guideline in the states. Uh, first 14 days, uh, you, know, you stay in your room and you are tested. And then you're tested again. Uh, one of the best thing we are doing is we are doing as many tests as possible. That's the only way we can uh, keep, 
you know, other residents have. Sure, sure. And so I know we, I just saw the time, it's six or nine. So, oh, over here in California. But, uh, you know, we wanted to let you all know, again, there is a big demand who are buyers of the assisted livings that we are building or Shahid and, you know, we are building a lot more, 10 of them or so every year for next 10 years. But again, the thing is, all these are different users, private parties, REITs, they are the institutional, they are the ones who are purchasing these. I just want to go a little bit further quickly because we won't have time then. And we do uh, see that, you know, for the senior living, cost segregation is huge also in the second year, not the first year because first year is a dirt. So we cannot do cost segregation, but we do lots of great things. So there are benefits for investors in accelerated depreciation that's passed through through the K1. 1031 exchange is also, which is very exciting because we are building so many of these, not that we are selling anything, but other operators also, if they are building a few, they can do 1031 exchanges in this and self-directed retirement funds and they can all come in. And just again, you know, our mission is to revolutionize assisted senior living. And that's why we are doing this podcast every Thursday at 5 p.m. PST. We do live at four channels all across the, you know, actually we, got, we want to go global on this one and rebroadcast it again on Saturday. So that's just wanted to say why senior living again, we could go over a lot more things, you know, why we feel it's the best, you know, uh, main focus is spoiling the generation. And maybe, you know, Shade, you would like to tell us you had previous business and you were supplying to seniors, right? Please. Yeah, so I was in a medical supply business and uh, one of my uh, responsibility was to uh, visit as often as possible uh, assisted living memory care uh, for uh, deliveries or marketing, uh, walker, wheelchair, scooter, hospital, bed, CPA, BIPAP, and all those things. So this is where I start thinking that, you know, I was not happy how those current situation and, uh, re and the facilities were uh, rent. So this is where, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I met my uh, partner, uh, you know, Sam Martin. We became very good friend, brother. So, and we started our very first uh, community uh, in uh, 2012. And uh, uh, this is where uh, our, you know, building our very first, uh, you know, I felt, you know, something, that's what I wanted to do for the uh, rest of my life. And I was just, uh, you know, I was, when I had residents, you know, come to me, how, how I changed their life. Um, because on my very first community, there was another ALF, uh, I would say maybe less than half mile. And I had nine residents moved in, in my very first uh, uh, community, in my uh, very first uh, opening. And that stories uh, was told, I was horrible. So, and this is where I started full time and I seen you know, I used to be a little bit, you know, concerned, you know, how these people can uh, afford to pay uh, four to 6,000. And when, once I saw it, it was happening and I, we never had anyone, you know, leaving the building because they couldn't afford the rent. So uh, that's where we started our uh, full time. And then we, since then we've been building uh, two to three uh, for first few years. Then now we are building uh, four to seven each year. So. Sure. In uh, 2020, we are building uh, nine facilities, and then for next year, we have uh, 14 already lined up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Shade. Again, I just wanted to mention that. Maybe, John, you want to go over this? Of course. So our communities are truly all inclusive. So it's everything from everything except the telephone, but three daily meals, snacks, coffee, tea, um, truly amazing. The housekeeping, laundry, linen, um, help with your daily, daily activities, social, educational, and cultural programming. So we truly believe in the community effect. So not just put mom or dad in front of the TV. We truly believe in the community by putting on, you know, different games, different events, have people come play the piano, you know, inside out. And the really cool thing, schedule transportation as well. So if you have a doctor's appointment, all the units, they're beautiful. We 
know that most of the residents will be female. So we made sure to include big closets, nice bathrooms, um, big enough for wheelchairs. So we kept all the, the important things in mind. And then our communities, that's one thing we really pride ourselves on that it's truly a place like home. So, you know, many lounges, private dining rooms, movie theaters, libraries, club rooms, spa, salons, you know, for the females. And so there's no actually additional charge to use them. You just have to have your beautician come in um, yeah, and so here's pictures. They're absolutely and, and I'll be honest, you know, before I started this year, I never seen uh, any senior living had a movie theater, spa, salon, as you can see, you know, sunroom. It takes huge square foot and it adds up cost as well. So, but I really truly wanted to spoil this generation. I wanted to give them everything they needed, not just, uh, uh, you know, care as well as lifestyle. And it also take off from, uh, you know, their uh, family. They don't have to worry taking mom out. As you how know, is, how do you how does this price compare like the cost compared to the regular senior living facility for all the amenities that they're getting yeah so what we do is uh, we uh, you know we do as much saving as possible while we are under construction we're looking the site um, you know last week mr chopra asked me to meet someone for site they were asking four million i said no i only pay you know seven to eight hundred thousand if i pay four million <laughs> I will be asking 18 to 20 percent higher. Yeah. So those due diligence, uh, you know, you know, help us Your to cost, yeah. cost down. Yes. Yeah. No, these are some of the pictures I wanted to show as we are talking. Please see what you know. We are able to put it not just the structure outside. But the inside, it's just like you're living in your home or a five-star hotel, you know, and uh, in a billiard room and all the things and library and uh, mm -hmm. movie theaters and piano and all and dining. This is regular dining, actually. I want to really. It's restaurant it. style. Um, we take yeah. their order, what they are in mood to eat that evening, afternoon for lunch or whatever, and then that's how we treat them, and that's the only way we can spoil them. Sure. If not, you know, they have to, you know, choose from our menu. You know, they have the option. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I get complaint from kids. Hey, you know, mom get five pound, ten pound. <laughs> you know, they are healthy. They are healthy. They're eating good. Uh, so that's awesome. Can we prepay for later, Shahid? Like okay. <laughs> of course. For, for uh, senior living facilities. <laughs> And their high ceilings and everything. And then, of course, you know, we wanted to say something. I know lots and lots of people are there. I'm very excited. Thank you so much, Kavita. We'll open it up for questions and answers. Wow. And uh, thank you for inviting us. We were able to just, uh, you know, give a little bit flavor of that. I just wanted to also mention that branding is essential for every business. And we just opened this company, which is just doing great. I just wanted to, maybe you would say, Vinny, oh my gosh, what did you put it here? It's just that a lot of people need these things. And we want to share this little slide to let you know that we are trying to get this at very, very minimum cost over here. So that's our new company I've started, Monil Digital Branding, and then we'll go right into it. We hope that we have helped you you know, understand why senior living might be a good investment, but we are open for questions and answers. Yes. All right. Let's get into the questions now. Sure. So Gaurav asks, is there a value add component possibility in senior living asset like multifamily, or do you mainly only do development of new facilities? Are there any 1031 exchange deals you've done or plan in future? Excellent. We would say, uh, you know, definitely that we do it from ground up. We look at all the different data points and all where seniors like to retire, look at their needs like feasibility study we talked about in the presentation. And we try to build only like 8, 10 or 12 percent of the total need. The good part is that since we are building it brand new, as you know, there is not a value add component at all. Just like when there is a multifamily brand new, it's very hard to add anything new because it's got all the facilities that we could ever provide to the residents. But we do build them fast. We spend about six to nine months to get the permits, ordinance changes, buy the land, get the construction, get the architectural drawings. We only are actually raising money from the investors when we are ready to put the shovel in the ground 
and then we build it in 12 to 14 months. We manage it for another 14 months and then we sell it. Sometimes we get offer right during construction. So that way we could even sell it right as soon as we just finished building it in 14, 16, 18 months, we could sell it and give it to the new operator. But many times our goal is to sell between 2.5 years to three years so that we can give it away and build the next one and the next one. Because our goal is to build about 100 or maybe 200, you know, in my case, I'm- I was thinking old. this afternoon, over 600. And yeah, yes, yes. So, All right. Yeah. So, so I, I hope think, that helps. Yeah. yeah so, think, so, so the big benefits for 1031 exchange, Kavita, is uh, yes. you can uh, avoid capital gain. For right. Mm -hmm. but, Absolutely. Yeah. So you, is there like a minimum you can only do the 1031 exchange for? Because most operators I know will have like a certain minimum dollar investment for which they will allow 1031 exchanges. No, we are 100% open. Even okay. if it's uh, 50,000, yes, we will. No, no, no. <laughs> no, we are not. Come on, Shahid. 50 is too low. No, I was going to say, sorry about that. But I would say money coming into the project, probably 350, I think we talked. I because have two people. It's a lot of overhead to do a 1031. Yeah, it's quite a bit. But on the way out, I wanted to explain that we do have opportunities for our investors to do 1031 into the next community and next community and next community. So you never have to pay any capital gain, you know, that way, because it will be deferred till eternity, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and I think to answer Gaurav's question also saying that you ba you basically don't do any, ta don't take on existing senior. No, we never. Try to never. Re rehab it. It's not. We, our standards are very high, Kavit. I'd be very yeah, happy with you. If I cannot put my own parents. No, I'm not it's going not to operate it facility. No, it's not working. Yeah. I think, and there's also a related question here. Um, what happens if you're not able to sell these communities when you build them? Uh, well, I have not, I have not experienced that yet, Kavita. Uh, you know, last Monday I had a meeting with a REIT person. The facilities they will be completing end of October. They wanted to put LOI. Hmm. So and you there don't was even have my, to build them. You don't even have to worry about stabilizing there, them. And there was my fourth REIT uh, uh, conversation I had. So there was my fourth uh, person who, want, who wants to buy my uh, got it property. yeah and we have not uh, any trouble at all but i know shahid and i've talked about we have bigger pockets that we could even buy it in third year you know some of the ones we we don't see for see but we we are willing to buy you know right. so that you our finance the investors out and yes yes yeah. yes of course, of get course. the investors out and basically run it and it's still a cash cow for you totally yes totally. Yes, yes got it I mean, as you've seen, it's not going anywhere for next uh, 14, right. 15 years. 14 years. It's going to be million, million. So in 10, next 10 years, we're looking at 9 million. So Makes yeah. sense. This is a good question, I think. Um, so, so Yan Yan asks, average stay of memory care and assisted living is relatively low compared to, I remember seeing the others, right? The, sure. the one yeah. on the left mm -hmm. was yeah. much higher, the average stay. So does this mean the turnover rate is high? You know, and, uh, you know, assisted living is usually last place where loved ones are, you know, living. So, and since we are seeing, you know, very high in, uh, in medical, you know, everything is available on our tip. So it's, it will change and they are, you know, living healthier, but still, it's still uh, 24 months to, I would say 28, 29 months. Is that more like connected to mortality or is it connected to the residents leaving to go stay somewhere? No, no, no. As I said, you did the last place they are living. Mm. Yes, it's, it okay. becomes a necessity when you cannot take care of yourself. Got it. Uh, at home, you end up going hospital, then you have the new right. last place is uh, assisted living. So what happens with memory care? Is that different? Because memory no, care- No, no, it's the same thing. Similar, okay. Yes. I hope that answers the question. Mm -hmm. uh, Marinelle asked, not sure if I missed it, but would love to know if you also invest in residential care facilities for the elderly. No, 
No, not at all. See, residential care facilities or residential assisted living is a whole different bear where people are able to buy homes, single family home, maybe six bedroom, eight bedroom, then they convert them into residential, right? Ours are multifamily at the core. We are building 88 units, 92 units, 100 units. That's the maximum and all one story, no elevators, and with great courtyards, we, I just passed through the slide quickly, but that is where it really boils down to give the experience to our residents and they are able to enjoy coming outside and planting their vegetables and their fruits and you know doing flower pots and then waterfall functions on this side, swing pool, of course, where we can do it. And you know all these are filled with then putting green. So, all that can be only achieved when they can come out of their door from their unit. See, these are all units all around it. So we build three or four courtyards in every community. We want them to have the best experience, yeah. So which cannot happen in, res well, residential it can for a smaller number, but they can't have movie theaters and, you know, all the other stuff, yeah. And we encourage them to live throughout the facility, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, Madhavi asks, what piece of the pie is assisted in memory when it comes to demand, growth, and supply? Do we have stats for the same? Usually memory care is, I would say, um, 18 to 22%. Okay, 18 to 22. Yeah. And uh, assisted living? Assisted living would be, uh, you know, uh, I would say uh, 60%. 60, hmm. Yeah, I think what maybe she's asking is that, you know, maybe what's the population? I would say that probably assisted living, right, Shahid, gets to about 83 years of age, about 83. No, it, yes, that could be the average, but we've seen it, uh, you know. Uh, Younger. Younger. Yes. Yes. 70 years. Okay. Yes. Depending how your health condition is, uh, sometimes you leave your spouse. Mm -hmm. If you lose your spouse, you know, your health goes down and, and mm -hmm. it becomes necessary for you to move into left where you can have you know, friends. Sure, sure. So is there like a breakdown of what that population, that particular group looks like? So basically... I, I would say 80 plus. 80 plus. Okay. Yeah, 80 plus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a huge, huge number. And like we saw early on in the presentation, it's going to be greatly increasing. Yeah. 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 Even the 85 plus populations. Sure. Are yes. And we have residents over 100, 200, 30, so... I hope you guys have time because I have a lot of questions. Oh, sure. We are all yours. <laughs> uh, and I hope you guys, uh, the audience, you're, you can stay late because we have a lot of questions. We're not going to be done in three minutes. <laughs> so, uh, Luis asks, for your current assisted living assets, what strategies did you implement to mitigate drops in occupancy and move-ins, sales and conversions due to COVID-19? What results did you see? Hmm. So basically what happened, this COVID was uh, carried uh, from uh, discharge in the hospital. So uh, that's where we start taking residents from hospital uh, because in, uh, we also for some nursing home. Uh, we saw that, you know, coming uh, from hospital and especially at the beginning, they were not tested. They were not test available. So one person comes and give to other others. So this where we were making sure uh, they were in you know, 14 uh, days in their own room. So uh, it was effective, of course, uh, families were concerned, uh, especially people were staying home, so they were taking care of their elderly. So it slowed down, but uh, was now uh, we had opened, as I said, our second week in June. Since then, uh, second week June now, we have had taken, I believe, 11 residents. So. They were, you know, they were, you know, you know, afraid a little bit. And plus families, you know, was home, their kids, so. Okay, I uh, hope that answered your question. During COVID-19, did you experience increased operational expenses with PPE, staff, et cetera? No. So no extra operational expense? No, no. It was, uh, again, it's a healthcare facility. So as I say, it was not something like we have to, adopt, you know, so we already had those things in our uh, standards. 
So nice. the nursing home saw more of that impact rather than assisted living facility. Correct, That's correct. Right? Yes, yes. And there's yes. a difference between the two. And I think yes. everybody yes. kind of puts them together as yeah. senior living. And yes. that's so, so again, nursing home residents, they come direct from hospitals or the, from uh, physician's office. Usually 90% comes from hospital and they were uh, more affected than assisted. Right. As soon as I said we knew, we were completely locked down. Even you saw a video, even birthday people were wishing from out in their window. Yeah. So, and as I said, you know, big carrier was from hospital. So and that goes to nursing home. Even from nursing home, we stopped taking residents for at least, uh, I believe for uh, 45 to 50 days, I believe. So you did put some measures into place where nursing yes. home residents could not yes, come. Yes, yes, yes. So Gaurav asks, how much is the cost segregation component in senior living on the second year, say on a 100K investment? How much negative paper loss of the invested capital? What percentage? Okay. I think we could kind of talk about it. I, I, you know, I'm sure it will be pretty strong here too. This is a class building and we are putting a lot more money. I can give some idea the $35 million deal that we bought in December, just to say in multifamily, this is multifamily also, because we'll be also asking the CPA firm that does cost segregation. My 100,000 investors got minus 61,000 in K1. So that was pretty steep, you know, in the multifamily. In senior living, right, Shahiji, it's got a lot of furniture, mm -hmm. lots of different more, things, more commercial kitchen, a lot more, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it should be like 100% or close to 90 something. Probably, percent. yeah. yeah. But you guys haven't gotten to that phase of doing cost segregation study. No, I have done it multiple times, Kavita. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have done multiple times uh, cost segregation in 1031. So let's say on a typical building, what kind of percentage did you see in cost segregation of your investment? Uh, I... I cannot just answer that. I will have to look the numbers. Okay, okay. I, we, we will have a look and send it to you, Gaurav. Sure. Yes. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, if the target is middle class population, how can they afford four to 6,000 per person or, or per couple a month in senior living payments? What's their average net worth of the residents? Hmm. Usually they have a retirement fund anywhere from 300 to half million. Even sometimes they are coming from a house, they are selling in that uh, uh, range. And as I said, in last uh, nine years, me operating, uh, I have not seen anyone left because they could not afford. I think uh, if you look at it as a holistic number, it's really not that much because if you think about a house, how much it costs every month, utilities, exactly. food, add all those less. It costs yes. four thousand dollars to live anywhere nowadays. Yeah. So. We we have a chart, a sheet that we yeah. follow and we give to residents see w how much they were spending at home versus in uh, mm -hmm. uh, assisted living, and it's believe or not uh, lower at least uh, fourteen to sixteen percent. Yeah, I can believe that. I mean, and there I are some uh, communities. Is they even charging nine, ten, eleven thousand? Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. So that doesn't seem unreasonable at all. Uh, for such a nice facility, definitely not. I mean, um, I just opened Cape Coral. We are charging for one bedroom average uh, 4,400, depending on care level. And mm -hmm. you know, same size one bedroom, my competitor are starting. They are starting with uh, 5,100. Wow. Right. And the cost yeah. of care too, right? If you're living yeah. at home, you have to find people to come help sure. you. That when you start adding those up, that gets expensive really fast, I would imagine. Right. The care caregivers and then the cooks and all the all people. of that, right? The food. Yeah. I mean it's not I mean, when you can't move, what can you do, right? You can't actually go cook for yourself. You need someone to help you cook. And you I start adding those costs. That makes sense. And, and these residents, COVID, they say, we wish we uh, have moved here sooner. Right. <laughs> I can imagine. So Louisa asked, during COVID, how have you managed the turnover of tenants and staffs on current uh, assisted living assets? So, you know, we gave them bonuses and... Uh, Believe or not, these people are not there just for paycheck. 
they, mm -hmm. you know, we take it very serious, Compassion. you know, when, even yeah. we um, uh, employ, you know, it has to come from their heart. Yeah. If it's not coming, they don't last very long. You know, I mean, for ten, twelve dollar, you are changing diaper. You know, giving bath. I mean, when you could do same thing in McDonald's, you know, flip the burger and make ten, twelve dollar. Right. So it, you know, it, it's not just we hire anyone from street. It goes very advanced training and passion. Why are we doing this? Yeah, so the person you know, has to have real good compassion, you know, for the seniors. It's in there, you know, they want to make a difference. Right. So that's a huge part of our whole management structure. When we hire people, they stay with us longer and longer and their bond gets bigger and bigger with the residents because they I, there. it becomes their family. Um, family. Yeah. It's, it's, as I said, it's not, this is not a job for everyone can do it. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. I can understand that. All right. There are a lot of investment related questions, guys. I'm going to skip over that because, yeah, you know, sure. we can do another investment webinar because I don't yeah. want to make this. That'll be better. Yeah. I would feel better. And yeah. Distributions and all yeah. lots of questions no, about this that. Is just the educational part and a little yeah, bit. Yeah, this is education going. focused. Yeah. So if, if you guys are interested, please reach out to me. I will be setting up another education, not educational, but investment related webinar where we talk about the specific asset and the investment amount and totally. target in target returns and yeah. all of that stuff. So today is not the right day no for holds that. Bar. <laughs> yeah. In that one, no holds bar. You can ask everything. <laughs> yeah. There you can ask all these questions. Um, this is a good one from Ashmi. I think uh, she said, maybe I missed this in the charts, but what percentage of 65 plus end up in those types of senior living by choice or by need? What percentage of 65 that, you plus? Know, the people we showed, right? All the silver tsunami and people yeah. going over, what percentage of those actually end up in the senior living facilities? That these kinds of facilities. Mm -hmm. So as I said, it's a necessity. It's not like, uh, you know, you wake up one morning, you call your friend or your, you know, your, your kids, hey, I'm moving to assisted living. It's a necessity. Mm -hmm. So, but what percent? I think yeah, that be something. Growth. Yeah, what percentage of that total population? I think that's something we could definitely get get the research done. I don't know if you have any graph of that uh, caliber, John. Do you think? Uh, well, if we can go back to that sixty-five, eighty-five, that number, that graph sure. is not the different. I would think that eighty-five range would yeah, probably would be the chunk of people would there would be going into sure business, right yeah i think so because see because the age group which is this one the 65 uh right over there right yeah. so this is where we are thinking in this range uh right over there so we have total population of 6.7 million right now in usa 85 plus mm -hmm. and more, I mean, you know, let's say even 60% of that or 70% of them need assistance care. That's a bunch of, you know, right. you know, people who need. And of course, uh, it's going to grow because the age population, like we said, silver tsunami, of course, they're going to grow to this and there'll be more people joining right here too, because that's the 65 population. This is getting increased by 10,000 every night. <laughs> you will see 2020, um, uh, uh, 65, you know, by uh, 2030, 20, yeah. there will be 75 and right. 40, there will be 85. So now you can see it's uh, 80.2. Uh, 80. Right. Yeah, all this, all the 65s are going to get added here and it's just yes. compounding, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So there is a big, big need. And that's why probably they are talking about this one here. The yeah, there are also some uh, state funded, government funded assisted living as well. So if you cannot afford uh, mm -hmm. like uh, luxury, you know, uh, you know, we are building. So definitely there is uh, something they can still end up that will be funded by, uh, by state. Sure. Yeah, there, there are a lot of questions still. Um, so let's see what we can answer. How do you maintain the standard of living at an assisted living facility? Do you recruit from the hospitality sector? From the hotel sector, you mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
that how, group how do we care, how do you keep the standard of living like oh as far as the care standard of care i guess that's what it is hmm. well we have policies procedure in uh, you know our standard is what we follow and then we also regulated we are 100 percent state license certif certified facilities so so do you personally recruit people or do you have a team that actually does the recruiting of these people? For employment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, in, people just apply. Oh, no, no. Who, yeah. who actually gets them in through the door? Like you, do you have a staff that's interviewing? Yes, yes, oh, yes. Yeah. we are HR manager. Right now we employ over 700 employees in our 700. 14 uh, senior living, yes. So I guess yeah. the staff is already, they know what they're looking for in those yes, people. Yes, um, yes. Usually this is a, a office manager, HR manager. Hmm. And okay. we have four to six weeks training before we even put you on the floor to see okay. a resident. So, mm -hmm. And we know exactly who will pass. We go very mm -hmm. uh, advanced uh, background uh, check, uh, drug screening. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all the investment picture, uh, yeah. questions, uh, we we'll have to postpone those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when the seniors are gone, do you need to find new tenants? Mm. So what is the stabilized occupancy rate? So, so what's the occupancy what average you guys average across your, uh, mm. usually it's uh, 92 to 94%. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So some more 1031 exchange questions. Um, I'm going to skip that over. So yes, I think Gaurav, your question is right. Uh, it would be a 350k capital to initiate a new 1031 exchange, whereas a new uh, continuing investor who wants to continue can continue there. I yes. believe the initial investments minimum 100k. 100k. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what happened when you are doing in group, then they see a group. So as I, as I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. it, so it could be as low as 50,000, but you are not the only, you are taked with other partners or other investors. Mm -hmm. So Jan asked, I think I can answer this question. If I invest using a subter at IRA, can I still benefit from cost segregation? No, oh, you yeah. Uh, you can't benefit from cost. You agreement. cannot really, yeah, uh, because it's different. Yeah. yeah, it's different anyway. It will help you, but you probably want to use a taxable account to invest from because that's really where it'll make um, create yeah. the most bank for your buck from the cost segregation. The good thing using uh, investing from IRA is it will grow your IRA account. So. Right. 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 And I, I recommend a solo 401k instead for yep. other reasons. Yep. You don't have to deal QRP, Q -E -E -Q -R -P, whatever. Wow. It doesn't matter. Um, as sponsors for your deals are your fees. Okay, we'll get into the fees uh, while talking about the specific deal. I'm sure they will vary. Uh, so we're not going to get into that today. What is your break even occupancy typically? Oh. Uh, I would say anywhere from uh, 37 to 42%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that's low. That's mm -hmm. even. What states are best to invest in senior living of all the states? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just built one uh, senior living in a very small town called Chesney in uh, Michigan. I had some residents, they were living in the uh, state of Florida. They moved back to uh, that uh, oh. small town in Michigan because they said that's where they grew up and they want to live their, you know, uh, you know, last days in their own town. So it mm -hmm. depends. And then we do hear, you know, people are moving to Texas, Florida, Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be in every state, hopefully. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, what is the expense ratio, um, for your, uh, for running the facilities? Like what's your typical expense ratio? Actually, it's way lower. That's something I know we've been dealing with the lenders. They can't understand how can we operate uh, at such low. Yeah, so the, the, the standard uh, average uh, for, um, for uh, is, is uh, 40 to 45%. 
and uh, mine is uh, 52 to uh, 56 percent so expense or is it income profit like, uh, profit okay. okay profit yeah, yeah. So, so you're saying normally the expense would be 50 percent or 60 to 55 to 60 percent expense yes. ratio just market then, average yes you are you are a little bit lower on the expenses yes. so you Correct. make more like 48 percent expense yes. ratio Yes, right. I had to spend 45 minutes this morning with one of the financial lender explaining <laughs> them how it is possible when market standard market is, is a 40 to, uh, 40, uh, 42 to 44 percent. I was uh, 56, uh, yeah, 56 and 57 percent. 10%. Okay, maybe it's the profit and oh, the yeah, yeah, expense and profit. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. So we are about 20% lower, I think that's what. And the market, okay. So we'll, we'll definitely get into the expenses more when we actually yeah. look at a real deal, right? Yep, yep. Um, so Luis says, thank you for hosting an informative webinar. You're welcome, Luis. Uh, B says, uh, what states do you have your assist assisted living facilities? Why right now we have in the state of Michigan and Florida, and we started one in Williamsburg, Virginia, and we mm -hmm. have another three coming uh, in Virginia. So right now we are in uh, state Florida, Michigan, Virginia, and we're supposed to start in March in Dallas in fourth award. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping, uh, hopefully in fall, we should be able to start. I hope you guys are prepared for the property taxes here. <laughs> 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 yes. Fun. Totally. Okay. No, but we like the market there. I know we are looking, you know, Texas always, the demographical shifts are telling us Texas still going to grow. Big, yeah. so definitely. Ashmi asks, is there a separate market for separate builders, investors who invest in existing senior facility? Like, I guess she's talking about the more the value add. Is there a separate market for that? Uh, value add senior assisted living, not new builds. Yeah, I think we are not into that because we want to bring the luxury to our valued seniors and that's what our motto is. So we'll never buy a facility. A lot of people are sending me deals that you know we want to convert them and this and upgrade them. It just doesn't fit our model at all because we're gonna build just like this and duplicate them all across USA. That's right. our you know, theme. Is. If you really want to position it for purchase with the REIT, you have to look at a class A asset. You want to do a new build, right? Because yeah. the REITs are not chasing after more no. value add deals. They're playing yeah. big. So totally. it doesn't really make sense with that play at all. So true. So you're so right. Yep. Um, Paras asks, what states have a disproportional growth of population requiring senior living facilities in the next 10 years? A good question. Well, you know, I think we are more data driven, just like Shahid will say, we look at, okay, where are the seniors retiring? You know, there are a lot of statistics out there. They're moving from the North Canada, uh, you know, colder places to warmer places. Mm -hmm. That's something. So we are finding that Virginia's, the Florida's, the Texas, Arizona's, you know, all these areas where warmer climate, there'll yeah. be a lot more demand. So we That's are following true. those trends. In Cape Cod, Florida, uh, we received, uh, I believe, three or four deposits this week, and they were from uh, Ohio, uh, Massachusetts, hmm. and uh, Kentucky, I think. Oh, wow. So, you know, the uh, kids were moving there in, here, and they wanted to bring mom, or, you know, their parents. Oh, wow. Sure. <clears throat> so a lot of investment related questions. And there's one interesting question here. Um, let me get that. I practice physical therapy for 16 years. Are there any built in rehab gyms or areas for contracted services to come into your facilities? Uh, there are some uh, LF, they do their options, but unfortunately, in our uh, Hampton manner, we do not because of the uh, liability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In independent, you can do, and 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 we see there's the room for uh, exercise, physical therapist, you know, gym type. Mm. 
Okay, so last question, and we're going to wrap this webinar up. Thank you uh, to all our guest speakers for being in here and our audience for hanging in there. I still see a good number of people on the call. So thank you for being patient here. Thank you. Um, Bia asks, where have you constructed your latest community? Why did you choose this city? Where do the residents come from? Are they from the same city or the same state? What are the typical trends? There's a lot of questions in there. Usually 70 uh, person is within uh, 12 to 15 mile radius. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So the big chunk just comes from yeah. in the community there. Yes. Okay. And uh, what made you choose the last city? Let's say Williamsburg, Virginia. Why did you choose that city? We, we studied demand and supply and the, uh, our targeted uh, client uh, you know, uh, population. So you have a you have some companies which do this research for you. Yes, yes, research? yes, yes. Got it. All right, guys. Thank you, everyone. Again, I want to thank our guest speakers, Shahid, Vinny, as well thank as John. Uh, John, I needed an introduction for you. I missed introducing <laughs> you. You spoke thank today too, so I should have introduced all of you. So thank you so much for being thank here. You. I really appreciate your time and sharing all your knowledge with us. Uh, very, very grateful. I learned a lot that I didn't know about senior living, and I'm sure our audience learned a lot today too. And thank you everyone for staying in late and being here, taking time away from your families to come learn with us every other Thursday uh, on these webinars. So I hope this was helpful for you. And if you are interested in learning more about investing in these, please shoot me an email. I'll put you on the top of our list when we actually have a deal and we, have, we do have some upcoming deals like they mentioned in Dallas. So I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop uh, please send me an email right after this webinar and I'll make sure that you are on a list and uh, we'll keep you informed. Uh, when we have a real webinar, you can come in and ask all these investment related questions and we're happy to spend the hour or as long as it takes answering yeah. them. Thank you, Kavita. Thank you so much for inviting us tonight. And thank, thank you everybody who was able to watch and ask some very good questions. We hope that it was very nice, you know, learning about this market. Thank you, Kavita, for everything. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, we do have projects planned in Texas and Dallas. As Vinny mentioned, there was another question. Mm -hmm. um, again, uh, good night, everyone. Uh, have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you. I will see you again in two weeks. <laughs>